Sutra Ananda, the nature of consciousness has no source but is a false manifestation based on the six organs and objects. Now take a look at the entire holy assembly gathered here. As you glance at each one in turn, everything you see is like what is seen in a mirror where nothing has any special distinction. Commentary The earth, water, fire, wind, emptiness, and seeing already discussed are six elements. Now we add consciousness to make seven elements. What is consciousness? It is recognition of or lack of it. What is recognized and is not recognized, nothing at all is recognized. Consciousness is defined as intelligent comprehension. Intelligence is understanding and comprehension is discerning. Why did I say the consciousness doesn't recognize anything at all? What do you think you recognize? You say, I recognize Mr. Smith the third, I recognize Mr. Lee the fourth, I recognize Mr. Wang the fifth, Mr. Brown the sixth. I say, so what? You say, I recognize them and they are my friends. It's just because you recognize them as your friends that they have dragged you away and you recognize what is false as true. You recognize a false friend as your true friend and you have forgotten your true friends. Mr. Smith is the third, Mr. Lee is the fourth, Mr. Wang is the fifth, Mr. Brown is the sixth. There's nobody there's nobody the seventh because basically this consciousness is the elder seventh. So the six elements discussed above and the seventh one consciousness are like seven siblings. But you've gone outside in recognition of your friends and have forgotten your seven siblings. You don't recognize the earth, you don't recognize the water, you don't recognize the fire, you don't recognize wind, that's the floor, you don't recognize, and you don't recognize emptiness, nor do you recognize seeing. Not only do you not recognize them, even Ananda didn't recognize them. So the Buddha, not uh, fearing to take trouble, found them for him one by one. He found his seven siblings. These are your genuine flesh and blood relatives, your genuine companions of this Dharma door, but you don't recognize them. You just keep hanging on to Smith the third, Lee the fourth, Wang the fifth, Brown the sixth, these possessive friends, and leave your real relatives abandoned at home. And so I ask you what you recognize. You don't recognize anything, and what you don't recognize is all yours. You reject the inherent worth and scenery of your homeland, but when you get outside, you cast off the root and grasp at the branches. You renounce what is close and seek what is distant. You go outside and get involved with people. Wouldn't you say this is upside down? Why do you go outside and get involved with people and don't recognize your own flesh and blood relatives? Because you take what is false as true, you take a thief as your son. You recognize a thief as your friend and go outside to use your conscious mind to do things. You say, what I'm using right now is the conscious mind. Right, you're really smart. You're smarter than I am. I am now lecturing the sutra and I hadn't recognized this as a conscious mind. But now that you say that, I understand. So I'll say some more. In the small vehicle, when you take what is false as true and use the conscious mind, it can be harmful. Now you recognize the false and the true, you have found the seven siblings of your household, and so now, although the conscious mind is false, it has turned into the treasury of the first come one. It appears from within the treasury of the first come one. That is called turning from appearances and returning to the nature. In the past, you were attached entirely to appearances, but now you understand the self-nature. Since you understand the self-nature, you should no longer renounce what is near to seek what is far, renounce the roots and grasp at the branches, or recognize a thief as your son. Then there is some hope for you. Then you have some wealth. I have talked to you about reciting the Suragama Mantra. If you are able to recite the Suragama Mantra, you will be one of the world's wealthiest people for the next seven lives. In fact, right now, 
If you are able to recite the Suragama Mantra, you are one of the world's wealthiest people because you understand this Dharma treasure. And when you put this Dharma treasure in your heart, tell me who can steal it from you. Whatever kind of robber or thief there might be couldn't rob you of it. That Dharma treasure is in your own self-nature. It is deposited in the vault of your first common treasury. And no one can find a way to go in there and steal it. How wonderful would you say that is? If you understand the Buddha Dharma, then right now you are one of the world's wealthiest people. But for the time being, you can't use your wealth. When you become a Buddha, it will belong to you. Right now, it's just the interest under your name. But you aren't of age yet. So for the time being, you can't use it. Ananda, the nature of consciousness, has no source. It doesn't come from anywhere. To put it otherwise, it has no root. Well, then, what it is? What is it? You wonder. It is a false manifestation based on the six organs and objects. In order to appear, it borrows the six organs of eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind, and the six objects of forms, sounds, smells, tastes, objects of touch, and dramas, the scene division, in the appearance division. Now take a look at the entire holy assembly gathered here. Ananda, look into this thoroughly now. Contemplate those in this Suragama Dharma assembly who have certified the fusion of sagehood. As you glance at each one in turn, look from one to the next in orderly sequence. Everything you see is like what is seen in a mirror where nothing has any special distinction. You look all around and what you see is just like reflections in a mirror. What special distinctions are there? The text here is discussing the function of the consciousness. Sutra, however, your consciousness will identify them one by one. For example, Manjushri, Purna, Modgalya, Yana, Saputi, and Shariputra. Commentary. However, Ananda, your consciousness will identify them one by one. Take a look at the multitude in this Dharma assembly and sequentially identify them. For example, Manjushri, the Bodhisattva, wonderfully auspicious Purna. This is Purnamichaya Niputra, whose name means Son of the Completeness and Compassion. This is Maudga Dhyayana, whose name means descendant of a family of being gatherers. This is Saputi, whose name means born into emptiness. Why is Saputi called born into emptiness? Because when he was born, all the treasuries, all the treasures in the storehouses he disappeared. That doesn't mean they were stolen by thieves. All the storehouses were very secure and locked tightly, but the treasuries but the treasures inside were gone. So he was called born into emptiness. After seven days had passed, all the treasures reappeared. So he is also called good appearance. His father went to a diviner to have his son's horoscope read. And the reading was both good and lucky. So he was also called auspicious and good. Those were his three names. This is Shariputra. Who was Shariputra? He was the one who out debated, debated his uncle while he was still in his mother's womb. His uncle was frightened by the thought of what his nephew would be like after he was born, and he felt that he would really lose face if he was defeated in debate by his nephew. So he went around India to study all kinds of theories, and he came back to debate with his nephew. But his nephew had already left the home life under the Buddha. The uncle wanted to steal his nephew back, so he challenged the Buddha to a debate. Who would have guessed that he'd be defeated without winning a single round? He was beaten at his own game. Sutra Does the discerning faculty of the conscious mind come from seeing, from forms, or from emptiness, or does it arise suddenly without a cause? Commentary. That's the discerning faculty of the conscious mind. The consciousness has a comprehending nature. 
it comprehends and discriminates on appearances but from where does the basic substance of consciousness arise where does it come from what is the mother of consciousness does it come from seeing is seeing the mother of consciousness is the ability to see the mother of consciousness does it arise from forms are things with form and appearance the mother of consciousness does it arise from emptiness or is empty space the mother of consciousness ultimately what is its mother or does it arise suddenly without a cause or is it born suddenly without a mother are there things in the world which suddenly come into being without a mother where does the consciousness come from sutra ananda super strong consciousness came from seeing if there were no brightness darkness form and emptiness if these four did not exist you could not see with seeing non-existent what would be the origin of your consciousness commentary ananda super strong consciousness came from the seeing Suppose the nature of the substance of your consciousness was born from seeing. If there were no brightness, darkness, if the two appearances of light and darkness did not exist, form and emptiness, if nothing existed that had a nature which is visible, and if there were no emptiness, if this form did not exist, if these four causes and conditions did not exist, you could not see. Drawing would not exist either. Without light, darkness, form, or emptiness, you wouldn't have any seeing. With seeing non-existent, what would be the origin of your consciousness? If the mother does not exist, how can the child be born? So the consciousness does not arise from seeing. Sutra, if your consciousness arose from form rather than from seeing, it would not see either in brightness or in darkness in the absence in the absence of brightness and darkness it would not see form or emptiness either in the absence of form where would your consciousness come from commentary if your consciousness arose from form rather than from seeing it has just been established that consciousness is not born from seeing perhaps then you say that it arises from appearances in the absence of brightness and darkness if it does not come from seeing, it cannot see light or darkness. Therefore, it does not see form or emptiness either. If it can't see light or darkness, how can it see form, appearances, or emptiness? In the absence of form, where would your consciousness come from? If there are no appearances to be its mother, where does a child called consciousness come from? Tell me. Sutra if it came from emptiness it is neither an appearance nor the seeing since it does not see it is unable by itself to discern brightness darkness form or emptiness since it is not an appearance it is in itself devoid of external conditions therefore there is no place for seeing hearing awareness and knowing to be established Commentary, if it came from emptiness, you might say that the mother of consciousness is simply emptiness. In that case, it is neither an appearance nor the seeing. There isn't any appearance and there isn't any seeing. Since it does not see, it is unable by itself to discern brightness, darkness, form or appearance, uh, form or emptiness. Without any discriminations, it cannot know them at all. Since it is not an appearance, it is in itself devoid of external conditions. If there are no appearances, conditions are also extinguished. There are no conditions at all. Therefore, there is no place for seeing, hearing, awareness, and knowing to be established. And since there is no seeing, hearing, awareness, or knowing, the situation is just as already explained. Without the mother, there's no way the child can be born. Sutra, since its location is devoid of these two, the consciousness that arises from emptiness would be the same as non-existent. Even if it did exist, it would not be the same as a thing. Even if your consciousness came forth from it, how would it discern anything? Commentary, since its location is devoid of these two, the consciousness that arises from emptiness will be the same as non-existent. 
If you propose that it comes from emptiness, it would be devoid of the ability to see or of an appearance of its own. So if it is from emptiness, it is the same as non-existent. It is incorrect to be on the side of existence and incorrect to be on the side of emptiness. If you can see it, no consciousness is born from it. If you can't see it, if you don't see anything at all, how can there be consciousness? If it were to arise from emptiness, it would not exist. And if it doesn't exist, how can a consciousness come forth from it? Even if it did exist, it would not be the same as the thing. You may say that it exists, that it is produced from something that exists, but it's not like a physical object. You can't see it, so what is it? Even if your consciousness came forth from it, Supposing that your consciousness arises from emptiness, how would it discern anything? How would your consciousness make distinct uh, discriminations? Tell me, Sutra, if it suddenly comes forth with a cause, why can't you discern the moonlight within the sunlight? Commentary, you say, other consciousness suddenly appears. If it suddenly comes forth without a cause, Without any reason at all, why can't you discern the moonlight within the sunlight? Can you see the bright moon when the sun is out? Why can't the bright moon suddenly appear, since it can't, your consciousness can't perceive the moon in the sunlight? So it is a mistake for you to say that it can suddenly appear. That's also incorrect. The Buddha is being unreasonable. Basically, there's no such principle, but he establishes it and asks Ananda about it and causes Ananda not to know what's right. Sutra, you should investigate this even more carefully, discriminate it in detail and look into it. The thing belongs to your eyes. The appearances are considered to be the environment. What has an appearance is existent. What is it without any appearance is non-existent. What then are the conditions that cause the consciousness to come into being? Commentary, Ananda, now you should investigate this even more carefully. Discriminate it in detail and look into it at the point where the most minute and subtle distinctions can be made. You should investigate it in even more detail and look into it. The seeing belongs to your eyes. Seeing originates from your eyes. The appearances are considered to be the environment. What has form and appearance is the defining environment before your eyes. What is without uh, any appearance is non-existent. What doesn't have form or appearance is said to be non-existent. What then are the conditions that cause the consciousness to come into being? Where does it come from? Sutra, the consciousness moves and the thing is quiet. They do not mix and unite. Smelling, hearing, awareness, and knowing are the same way. Nor should it be that the condition of consciousness exists spontaneously without an origin. Commentary, the consciousness moves and the thing is quiet. The consciousness makes discriminations and its nature in its substance is one of animation. The nature of the thing is quiet, it is unmoving. They do not mix and unite, so you say they can combine, but they can't. Smelling, hearing, awareness, and knowing are the same way. The nature of smelling, the awareness of hearing, and the nature that knows and is aware are the same. They do not mix and unite, nor should it be that the condition of consciousness exists spontaneously without an origin. Although the state of consciousness does not mix and unite, it should not be that the conditions of consciousness come forth without an origin. The same principle applies again. Without a mother, how can a child be born? Sutra, if this conscious mind does not come from anywhere, you should know that the same is true of the mind which makes distinctions and the seeing, hearing, awareness, and knowing which are all complete and tranquil. Their nature is without an origin. They and emptiness, earth, water, fire, and wind are together called the seven elements. Their true natures are perfectly fused and all are the treasury of the first common fundamentally devoid of production and extinction. Commentary 
if this conscious mind, if the conscious mind which makes distinctions does not come from anywhere, if there is basically nowhere that it comes from, you should know that the same is true of the mind which makes distinctions and the seeing, hearing, awareness and knowing. The awareness of seeing, the awareness of hearing, the awareness of smelling, the awareness of testing and the awareness of knowing are all complete and tranquil. All are perfect, still and very pure. Their nature is without an origin. There is nowhere that their nature comes from and nowhere that it is going to. They and emptiness, earth, water, fire and wind are together called the seven elements. Their true natures are perfectly fused and boundless. And uh, all are the treasury of the first come one. They arise from the treasury of the first come one and are fundamentally devoid of production and extinction. That's why they are not born or destroyed. Sutra Ananda, your mind is coarse and shallow, and so you don't, you do not recognize, you do not realize that the seeing and hearing are the treasury of the first come one, and you do not discover that knowing is the same way. You should contemplate these six locations of consciousness. Are they the same or different? Are they empty or existent? Are they neither the same nor different? Are they neither empty nor existent? Commentary Ananda, your mind is coarse and shallow. The Buddha admonishes Ananda again. Your thoughts are too coarse, too superficial. Coarse means not subtle, heedless. It means he doesn't stop and think or look into things. He doesn't investigate things. He's too impulsive and reckless and slapdash when he does things. The word shallow refers to his mind, the mind which is the opposite of his deep mind. Later, Ananda says, I offer this deep thought to those who are as countless as the most of those of the Buddha lands to repay the kindness shown me by the Buddha. But now, his mind is shallow, it's not his deep mind. It means he is not paying close attention to what is going on. And so you do not realize that the seeing and hearing and smelling, tasting, awareness and knowing their nature and capabilities are the treasury of the first come one. You don't understand the principles the Buddha explained about earth, water, fire, wind, emptiness and seeing. And you do not discover that knowing is the same way. Also part of the first come one's treasury. You don't comprehend that they are all functions of the treasury of the first come one. You should contemplate these six locations of consciousness. The six places of conscious mind are earth, water, fire, wind, emptiness, and seeing. Are these six aspects of the conscious mind the same or different? Are they empty or existent? Are they neither the same nor different? Are they not the same and not and yet not different? Are they neither empty nor existent? Or are they not empty and yet not existent? What would you say these six consciousnesses are like? Sutra you basically do not know that in the treasury of the first common, the nature of the of consciousness is bright and knowing. Enlightened brightness is a true consciousness. The wonderful enlightenment is tranquil and pervades the Dharma realm. Commentary Ananda, you basically do not know that in the treasury of the first common, the nature of consciousness is bright and knowing. The consciousness of the nature is bright light. It is enlightened. Enlightened brightness is the true consciousness. This enlightenment and light is the genuine consciousness. The wonderful enlightenment is tranquil. The inconceivable system, uh, su substance of enlightenment is tranquil and pure and pervades the Dharma realm. Sutra. It encompasses the emptiness of the ten directions and issues forth in it. How can it have a location? Commentary. The consciousness encompasses the emptiness of the ten directions and it shows forth in it. Encompasses means it contains the emptiness. It shows forth means it flows forth in emptiness. Containing and flowing forth in the emptiness of the ten directions. The consciousness is everywhere. How can it have a location? How can it be in a certain direction or have a certain location? Sutra, it is experienced to whatever extent is dictated by the law of karma. 
ignorant of this of this fact people in the world are so deluded as to assign its origin to causes and conditions or to spontaneity these mistakes which arise from the discriminations and reasoning processes of the conscious mind are nothing but the play of empty words which have no real meaning commentary it is experienced to whatever extent is dictated by the law of karma in accordance with the karmic response of living beings these various retributions arise ignorant of this fact people in the world adherence to external paths of the provision of vehicles and of the small vehicles and ordinary people those who have no wisdom are so deluded as to assign its origin to causes and conditions they wonder if this doctrine is part of the doctrine of causes and conditions they are confused and doubtful and don't recognize it clearly or they ascribe it to spontaneity the doctrine discussed by adherence of the naturalism of some external ways these mistakes which arise from the discriminations and reasoning processes of the conscious mind this is entirely the conscious mind making discriminations and calculations functioning on that level and nothing but the play of empty words which have no real meaning.